<laughs> okay, it's on. <laughs> switches on this guy. Um, so this is the switch gear. Uh, it's going to hold all our breakers and also the ISO system which basically is the real power plant operator. Um, so on each side we have a, their own switch gear, our own operating room um, where we hang out whenever we're running each plant. Uh, so we got the two breakers for each generator. In here we have switches to control the breakers. Uh, we have ISO which we'll talk about on the other side. Um, and then we have breakers for each of the feeders. Uh, so the feeders are just circuit breakers that go um, shut and they basically provide power out to the switch yard which is up on the hill over there and then from there out into town. Um, so you can see what each of the feeders power uh, stuff to. Um, F is the most important feeder because it supplies to the plants themselves. Uh, so if we do lose power to those, we basically lose power to the plant and we can't run our cooling pumps and the generators overheat and it's all bad. Um, so that guy stays shut pretty much all the time. Um, if something were to happen where we had an overload um, and where we just weren't providing enough power or the load and the demand got too high, um, it would basically start tripping a breaker uh, to try to meet that load um, to bring the, the requirements down a bit. Uh, but yeah, ISO does its thing. So we're here basically to, to monitor the plant, um, sights, sounds, and smells is a lot of what we do, take logs, analyze trends. Um, but as far as actually controlling the breakers, controlling the generators, starting, stopping everything, um, so ISO basically does it itself. We got Luke over here, the night operator. Hi. And then, so this is technically oh. the water plant right here. And then this is the B room. So we have two generators over here. Um, they're 1,400 kilowatt generators, 16 uh, cylinders on each one. Um, they're rated a little bit lower than they'd normally be rated in like the real world because we run them in a different configuration. Um, so we cool everything with glycol, and then the glycol we run through heat exchangers. Uh, so it's able to remove some of the heat, but not quite as much heat as ideally, again, in the real world, they'd be able to remove. Um, so that's why we, we, we stock it down a little bit to, to 1400. I don't know what they run normally in the real world, but here they do 1400. Um, and you guys can take pictures and stuff if you want. Uh, Shoot. Just no flash photography uh, is the thing. So. We have the black pyramids up there are flash detectors. So if they see a flash, it basically deploys a CO2 system. And um, we also have these temperature sensors, these round guys. And CO2 basically jets out of these red nozzles uh, and floods the room with CO2. It means there's no oxygen, and then you remove, uh, you know, part of what makes fire happen. So there's that, yeah. But yeah, feel free to take pictures. Um, other than that, um, so we got this big old battery bank. We got one of these on each side. Um, that keeps power to ISO in case we have a complete loss of power. Um, should give us like at least 15 minutes is what I hear. Uh, and then that way you can operate from ISO or ISO can kind of do its own thing and restore power, start another generator, start closing breakers um, and get us back online and stuff. Uh, so how these guys work is basically like a big old car engine you can imagine. Uh, I don't know too much about diesel generators. It's not my thing um, as far as power plants go. Um, so cool thing we got going on is these exhaust hoods. So exhaust goes up in that big old tube, comes all the way over to this guy, um, this big green box, as an exhaust heat exchanger. So you're basically pushing hot air, like thousand degree air usually most of the time, over these tubes. These tubes are filled with glycol and they come out here, you can see, up into the system. Um, and you're basically just drawing the heat off of the, the exhaust because um, they try to be as efficient as they can and make as much use of everything as they can. Um, so we send that up here. And then um, that comes out, uh, glycol's coming out of that system. It goes through this heat exchanger here, interfaces with more glycol, which goes out to what we call our town loop. Um, so that exhaust heat waste is used to heat buildings out in town. And then also uh, we have this one, this is a heat exchanger too. We have another one on the other side. Uh, and you can see the pipe right there coming off of the engine itself. Um, so that's going to be more glycol that comes in here, interfaces with the heat exchanger, uh, feeds out to the town loop. So most times, uh, if we're running pretty well, like right now we've been running two generators, I would be surprised if we have maybe one boiler out in town heating, uh, heating the supply. Um, so that heat's like 
your water and stuff like that. Um, so they, like I said, they try to get every every money they can out of it. But other than that, we got two cooling pumps here. That supplies our uh, house loop with pressure for the glycol system. And then back over here, we got generator one and its heat exchanger. Uh, it's equipment heat exchanger right here. Uh, giant air tank. So all the valves are air operated. Um, so you can see right there, that's uh, one of the valve display indicators. Um, it's showing closed right now. It's got that tube going over there. So basically uh, the DDC system gets a command from ISO and adjust the valves accordingly. So I don't have to come out here and operate a valve in order to get a heat exchanger going or get the, the generator going or anything. It's all entirely automatic. I just sit back and it does its thing. And then afterwards I go and check it out and make sure it's actually working out. Um, but yeah, as far as the generator room, it's not much else. You guys got any questions about that stuff? So this seems like a lot of yeah, yeah. So there's a ton of glycol and then two different loops. And then um, those, like the town glycol system goes all the way out to all the buildings and well, most of the buildings in town. Um, so all those loops are filled with glycol also. Yeah. Yeah. So we have um, these fill tanks right here. Uh, sometimes we have one in the water plant, which is constantly getting filled. So chances are there's a leak somewhere in the, the system that that provides, but no one's found it yet. So we just keep filling with glycol and hope for the best. Uh, but other than that, um, it's usually not too bad. And like we have a, an in-house loop and an out-house loop. So in-house is red uh, for the exhaust heat exchangers and stuff like that, and out is, is green. Um, so if we see any like green or red spots on the ground, uh, that's, that lets us know there's a glycol leak somewhere in the plant. What are all the tools for? Uh, one had a problem, it had an overcrank. Uh, so kind of like when your car is turning over and doesn't actually want to do it, um, that sort of thing. Um, other cool stuff on the generators actually. So we can take some logs from here. This is the, the control panel and also from here. So usually we don't have to because we have a nifty little computer. But worst case scenario, if we don't have that computer, we can go ahead and just flip through here. It shows all our gauges. We have fuel meters and stuff like that too. Um, on the other side, I'll actually show you the cylinder temperatures. So... We can monitor each of the temperatures for the cylinder. So 16 is right here. So this guy's been in, been cool all day for the most part. So uh, it's like 128 degrees. It ran a little bit earlier, so it's still cooling down, but those will get up again like 800 to 1100. Um, once they get to 1200-ish, we start worrying because they get kind of melty because um, it's just metal, you know? So, And then, oh, more about the generator though. So this is the engine end. And this is the uh, the generator end over here. So this is just like a car, basically. Um, it spins this shaft, uh, spins the rotor. It, like, inter like it's the rotor and the stator. So the rotor spins, the stator stays still, and makes a magnetic field, and that's how electricity gets generated. So it's kind of weird. Nothing touches each other. It's just building a magnetic field, yeah. and that creates power. So it's pretty rad. Um, and then we'll head over here to the day tank room. So the day tank room is. Uh, just where we hold our fuel, basically. So we have that uh, that big tank up by the murder sign, and that fills in here automatically. Um, yeah, so it smells like diesel, which is expected. So ideally, I think the reason why it's called a day tank is supposed to hold the fuel for a day. This guy definitely doesn't. It fills up constantly. The other side fills up every now and then too. Um, but you can see it holds like over a thousand gallons in this tank if it's really full. Um, and the other side, so the Exhaust heat exchanger and the day tank on the other side are about twice as big because that plant was designed for four generators, whereas this side was only designed for two. Um, but once we get over here, you'll see we only have three generators in there right now because um, we have a fourth one called Cabin Box, hangs out in a trailer in the back and is never going to be used. So, and then other than that,
run either like 50 to like 70, 80 gallons an hour. So this is how much fuel we've saved today because there's been no wind. So sometimes that'll get up to pretty decent amounts, usually in like the hundreds of gallons. We have a nice windy day. Um, you can see in the past, the past couple of days right here, we had a couple of days of really good wind. Um, we were able to get down to one generator a lot um, and supplement a lot with wind power. Um, this is what I think their total or like the week is or something. Um, but yeah, it's just a bunch of really cool graphs that uh, don't do the operators any good. They just sit here and look nice. They're cool for tours. I'm going to show them off and talk about the, the fuel thing is kind of cool. You know, how much we save, how much we use. Uh, but yeah, that's the, uh, the banding area. Where all the computer energy is going. So uh, that PD is our biggest one. Uh, and it's also the last of the trip. So this whole chunk gets saved to the very end in case something terrible happens and we have to start drinking. Uh, if you guys want, we got ear uh, earplugs up there and earplugs up here, and then also earmuffs over there. Um, we're basically just going to go grab those, we'll put them in, we're going to walk in the switch here and talk about some of the operator panels and stuff, and then we'll head into the... Uh, um, we got a couple things over here, we'll talk about ISO first. So ISO. You guys are nice, you just, you just stay away. Oh, <laughs> So here's a 
spin it up and we just keep the power so we keep spinning and spinning and spinning. In case there's a power outage or um, a generator ship, that'll kind of spin down and send power out. It's kind of the same idea as the rotor and the scatter, uh, where it makes that electrical field. Um, it sends power out, kind of smooths out the, the changes and stuff in power. Uh, so that's kind of nice for us. Yeah, how well it works, I don't really know. Um, our great wind turbines up the top of the hill. Um, so those can usually produce uh, up to about 335, 350 kilowatts each. Um, so you can see our load right now is about uh, 1,500. So that'll produce like two thirds of our load right now. Um, usually we're at peak load, it's about half of our load if we have a nice windy day. Um, so it saves us, like I said, a lot of money, a lot of maintenance. Who wants to be Dave? Who wants to be Kevin? What's that? Probably put it uh, actually on. Yeah. <laughs>
Cool. Yeah, so we'll head out this way. Yeah, so these are the coolant pumps for this side. They're a little bit bigger. Um, one of the only valves we operate here are these guys. So we can um, see what pressures they're doing. So that's about that's about the most uh, operations we ever do is just this guy. So. So I'm going to point at some of the temperatures and stuff in here. Here in the other plant. 
back row in the water plant, and then that was four canisters you saw over by generator run. Um, but these get checked every year. They get weighed, I guess, is how they check it, and make sure that they're still full. Um, but yeah, don't usually come back in here, and if something bad happens, it disperses the CO2 from here all over the plant, and you suffocate. So. Yeah, that's, a, that's the plant tour. So. <laughs> and we'll head back out to the main room.